Hello Vinyl Community, this is Randy. Uh, today I'm going to share with you some records that I got in the second half of February 2019. I did a video in the middle of February where I showed some uh, records I got in the first part of the month and I did a, uh, a video at the end of February where I showed some jazz records. So this is just going to be some uh, other non-jazz records that I got in the second half of February 2019. So, uh, just got this at the March 1st, actually. Seven inch single. This is uh, part of the Grateful Dead's seven inch single series where they are releasing uh, their first records that released as singles back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, this would have been from the early 70s and um, I guess the uh, so they're doing four a year. This is the third year, so this is the ninth single. They all come on colored vinyl. This one's blue. It's slightly marbled. I guess the good thing about this series is that uh, each of the record covers is a two-sided cover, so they they illustrate the song. So uh, Eyes of the World, Sometimes We Ride on Your Horses, Sometimes We Walk Alone. Weather Report Suite is an instrumental song. So, this is part of that series. There'll be three more throughout the year. <clears throat> Krabby Appleton. Happy Hippie, the vinyl guy, recently asked the question, could you dislike a band or not want to bring their record into your house just based on their name? Uh, I guess the, uh, the other question you could ask, would you like a band just based on their name? Well, Krabby Appleton. I like them just based on their name because I think it's a great name for a band. I, uh, this is an American band. Uh, this record was released in 1970. They were from Los Angeles. I really didn't know anything about them before I got this record. I'd heard them mentioned, uh, I think, a couple times on, in the vinyl community, but I, uh, other than it was positive, whatever it was, but I was thinking they were going to be more of a psych type band, but this, this really is like pop music. Uh, it's listed in Discogs. It's, as power pop, so uh, I've heard Nick Lowe uh, described as power pop, you know, raspberries, I guess, so it's the rock songs that can be played on the radio. Uh, there was a hit song on here, Go Back, fantastic song, I really was not familiar with it, but it was evidently a minor hit in the U.S., I would highly recommend that you check that out, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try to put a link uh, to that song in the comments, so instead of doing a needle drop. We'll try it that way. Uh, so go back. Uh, the rest of this album is really good too. It's like pop music. I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, so I did. I like this band just based on their name. Uh, I uh, found they got their name from um, a cartoon. I thought it would have been Peanuts because I was thinking, you know, Lucy because she's always crabby. Uh, but it wasn't. It was a Tom Terrific cartoon that it came from. Uh, evidently, uh, this band was from Los Angeles, and they were calling themselves Stonehenge. Then, uh, Michael Fennelly from the Millennium uh, was asked to join them as lead singer, lead guitarist, and they changed the name to Crabby Upton. So, uh, the Millennium, a you know, sunshine pop band from the 70s. So, I didn't know he had, uh, Michael Kennelly had joined this band. So, they only had two albums. This is the first one. In good shape. I'm glad I got this one. It's, it's, uh, came with the uh, original, I think that's the original, inner sleeve. It's just plain. This is an autograph copy. Harper autographed that for me, so thanks. It all sounds fine. Um, another uh, band that only released two records, British band, Gun. Uh, I definitely heard about this from the vinyl community. I'm pretty sure that Bill at Michigan Record Club mentioned this, and I think Chris Kibler mentioned it too, and um, I got this based largely on their recommendations. I'm very glad I did. Uh, this was recently reissued by Real Gone Records, uh, so I ordered it from them. So this is a new uh, copy. It came on this uh, colored vinyl. It's like a sort of a red splatter. It really looks nice when it's turning on the turntable. This is really weird. I, uh, uh, other than hearing them talk about it some, 
I really was not familiar with this band. I, I just couldn't believe it. And I listened to rock and roll my whole life, and this just seems like something I should have heard before. It's just heavy, uh, yeah, power trio guitar rock. So, uh, really good. Two of these guys are, are brothers. This is the guitar player. This is the bass player. This is the drummer who is not a brother. Evidently, they started uh, in the 60s uh, with Paul Curtis, the bass player, actually was playing guitar at that time. Uh, they had some lineup changes. Uh, Adrian Curtis, the other brother, came in as uh, guitarist. For a while, they had John Anderson from Yes singing. At least that's what I read. Uh, but this guy, I guess, took over, so they were a power trio. They released this album, and the first song, Race with the Devil, sounds kind of bombastic when it first starts, but then this riff comes in and it's just fantastic. If I had done uh, Jeff Kempen's five riffs, this this would have been a riff that I would have put in there. It's just weird. I just can't believe I'd never heard this before. Uh, but it is really good. And They only had two albums, so I think I'm going to hold on for a while and see if Real Gone releases the second album. Uh, because I like to get a new one that sounds really pristine. I, I found a couple of the... Uh, the second album on Discogs, but they're all cutouts, and you know they're like very good, so uh, rated very good. So I, you know, hopefully maybe get a, a new one. So yeah, they said John Anderson sang with that band for a while. Well, I got this new used record store uh, in mid February. I'd actually seen it there uh, a couple weeks before there, but I didn't get it that time around. But I went back and got it. This is John Anderson, singer for Yes. Song of Seven is the name of the album. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about this record. I have been trying to listen to more progressive rock here in 2019, and so uh, Yes would be part of that. Yes would actually be one of the few progressive rock bands. I guess King Crimson would be the other one that I had most of their albums. So now I'm going to branch out, you know, maybe try some of their solo work. So this is the first one I got, John Anderson, the singer. Uh, this is pretty good. It sounds a lot like Yes. There's a couple of songs on here, maybe Summer Born, I think, and maybe hear it. It sounds kind of like 70s or 80s, you know, FM rock, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it doesn't sound like Yes, really. But, but most of the rest of this does sound a lot like Yes. Well, of course, the singer, John Anderson, I guess is going to always be associated with the band, you know, with the sound of the band. So uh, uh, this is very good, though. If you're a Yes fan, I think I could safely uh, recommend this to you. It also has a beautiful cover, isn't it? It's, it's, really good shape. I'm happy to get the used record in such good shape. There's a cutout right up there, but it's hardly noticeable. Actually, I didn't notice it when I was in the store. Uh, yeah, it also has this uh, really cool inner sleeve with the lyrics. I'm really glad that inner sleeve was still there with this record that was released in 1979. I uh, got another record there. Uh, same story. I'd also seen this one a couple weeks before and didn't get this. Steve Howe. The Steve Howe album. The guitar player for Yes. Uh, this is uh, the other one that John Anderson is also the bass on. The basic um, Atlantic label. The red and green label. I like that label. Uh, this is a heavy guitar work album. I was a little bit surprised that there are two songs with vocals on here. Uh, Steve Howe actually sings on, uh, uh, I believe it's All's Accord. Uh, you know, he's a good singer. I mean, the Yes has some great harmony vocals, and he's part of that, but I'm not sure his voice works very well, real well as a, as a lead singer. There's another song on here with uh, vocals. It's sung by a, a woman. Um, it's called uh, Look Over Your Shoulder. Claire Hamill sings that. Steve Howe uh, wrote these songs and the words. I'm, I'm just not sure why he wanted to even have words. I would have really prefer, other than those two songs, it's all instrumental. And, and for me, that would be the preference I, I could have done without those two songs. Otherwise, some of the songs have a little bit of a country feel. Some of it sounds like yes, like prog rock. And uh, this very last song, Concerto in D, is actually an orchestrated song. Uh, orchestra playing on that so uh, other than those two songs with the vocals I like this one a lot he kind of reminds me of Chad Atkins and he can evidently play anything on guitar and 
he does it on this album. It's, I wouldn't say it's like showing off. It's just like, you know, sh showing us what all can be done on a guitar. A very cool inner sleeve here where it shows all the guitars that he plays on this album. And then down here in the bottom part, these charts, it lists each guitar and then the song or songs that it was used on. I thought that was a very cool idea. You know, I think chances are good that most of the people who bought this record are guitar players or they're certainly guitar fans, so it's nice to give all that information. Uh, I, uh, I forgot to mention on this gun record that this is actually the first Roger Dean album cover. Roger Dean, very well known for doing the Yes album covers. This was the first one that he did. So, uh, in addition to uh, John Anderson singing, I guess, for a short while with that band, they all have the... Uh, uh, well, actually, I'm not sure if this is a Roger Dean album cover. I'd have to check on that. But this one definitely is. Obviously, it looks like the Yes album covers. Uh, continuing to, uh, you know, listen to more progressive rock, I got this, um, Super Tramp album, Crisis, What Crisis? This was used, it's a great shape, really glad to get this in such good shape, it's a, a really good album cover. This is my third Super Tramp album, I have, uh, Crime of the Century and, uh, what's the one with the Statue of Liberty there on the front, uh, Breakfast in America. They're all good. I've enjoyed them. They're not really knocking me out. They're not my favorite band or anything, but uh, it's worth listening to. This came with a yellow winter sleeve. I assume that's the original and A&M label. So, <laughs> it was good. I'm going to continue to listen to it. Super Champ. Uh, this was definitely recommended to the vinyl community. I heard this Sandoz Lime. The name of the band, the name of the record, self-titled record, uh, was mentioned on um, Dead Rack 66 uh, live live stream two or three weeks ago. Uh, I'm not exactly sure who recommended it. It may have been Garner. I know Garner actually just showed this record in a video a, a couple of days ago, but <coughs> I'm going to show it too. Uh, it did come recommended from that show. Two or three people were talking about it, so I bought it just straight, basically. Uh, on their recommendation and it's really good yeah definitely psych this is uh, not highly produced it's kind of like g garage rock or very uh, guitar oriented there's a couple songs on here that are almost kind of bubble gummy uh, sounded so there's lots of fun uh, a good record so uh, thanks to the uh, vinyl community for recommending that one to me oh yeah the uh <laughs> Label on this is uh, Distortion Distortion Records. Next slide. Yeah. Another one I got completely based on a recommendation from the vinyl community, Psychedelic. Mentioned Truth is the name of this band. Of Them and Other Tales is the name of the record. He had a video a couple weeks ago where he uh, recommended this record, so I got it based on his recommendation. Uh, I would refer you to that video if you uh, want a, a, an in-depth review of this album. He did a really good job on it. He made it sound really good, and he was right. It, it is really good. It's definitely a psych album. But this is much more highly produced than the Sandoz line. Um, evidently, three of these guys were the other members of them, with Van Morrison, then Van left. These three guys uh, produced, I, I guess, a couple more uh, them albums. Uh, and then they traveled around. So I mean, the whole story is all in here. It's a, it's, it's a long story. It's all very well documented inside uh, here. And uh, uh, later on, they picked up this drummer from uh, Baby Baby Huey. I think was what that was called. His name is uh, Reno Smith. Recorded this album in. Uh, the early 70s, I believe. Uh, yeah, 69 and 70, I think. Uh, but it was never released until uh, 1995 when it was released on CD. And then this record was uh, 
printed, I guess, in um, 2008 on Missing Vinyl Records. Uh, so, so it's been a long journey for this band, and uh, it, it's well worth listening to, though. Uh, some of it's almost like uh, folk psych. It's uh, some of it's kind of poppy. Some of it gets to be, uh, yeah, really long, uh, uh, detailed songs. The song "High" uh, uh, inside too is a very good description of this person's experience. And uh, Archimedes' "Pad" is a long. Uh, song on side three. I wanted to point out there's a song in here called uh, Circle Around the Sun, which they incorporate some lyrics that are, I guess, just uh, public domain uh, folk lyrics that uh, some verses that uh, the Grateful Dead used in um, I Know You Writer. So they use it in Circle Around the Sun, the like the Bob Ware lyrics that say, um, uh, Lay down last night, could not take my rest. My mind was wondering like the wild geese in the west. So they used that here in the song called Circle Around the Sun. Well, so the Grateful Dead used that. Then there was this uh, band that created the incidental music when the Grateful Dead had their farewell shows in Santa Clara in 2015. That band called themselves Circles Around the Sun. I think they just produced some uh, instrumental music, which was used uh, before the bands came out and then between the band, one band there, uh, and then you know between sets. I saw DJ High Noon showed that record uh, just a couple days ago, but I believe that's just an instrumental. Anyway, circles around the sun. Uh, yeah, this is a two record set. I think three sides of it were recorded as like the record, and then the four side is sort of maybe like some demo type thing. Labels. Fairly basic there. But. Uh, yeah, this this is a good one. This is one that I will I will listen to a lot, and it's going to take me a little bit longer maybe to absorb that one. The last record that I have to show you today is uh, Leslie West. The name of this album is Mountain. Leslie West, of course, the guitarist for the power trio Mountain. This is basically Mountain. This is Felix Papillardi on bass, but the drummer's different. It's Indy Smart the second. So, uh, yeah. Power Trio, um, I guess if you compare them to Cream or Gun, I suppose would also have been a Power Trio. Leslie West, a blues guitar player, heavy blues. Uh, I think Dreams of Milk and Honey is probably the best known song in here, the first song on side two. Uh, but I'm a big Leslie West fan, so I'm very happy to get this. And also the records, I mean, the cover is just so great shape. Yeah, so I'm really happy about this. This is on Windfall Records. The Windfall Record label. It's a nice looking orange and red label there. So very enjoyable. Yeah, lot, lots of uh, strong, powerful guitar work here. So that's it. That's uh, the rest of the records that I got in uh, February of 2019. Let me know what you think about these records. If you have any thoughts on them, I would be very interested to know what you have to say. Thanks for watching.